Hello, today we are going to look in on the African Nightcrawlers and I'm going to discuss the 10 things that I learned last year that uh, probably I will not repeat in the future. So as we're going through here, you can see I've got a nice crop of really nice, huge African Nightcrawlers here um, who don't want to be cute for the camera. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through things here and uh, while I'm talking, I'll just, you know, yammer on. So I would say the number one thing that I learned this year is that um, too many worm bins. At one point in time, I think I had something like 23 worm bins. And quite honestly, that is too much. I, uh, that's, you know, more than I can comfortably take care of. Um, in a week or, or what have you. So uh, you may have noticed that I have started limiting my bins and that uh, I am slowly, you know, getting things down. These are not worms. These are pieces of bonsai. Um, slowly started reducing the number of bins uh, just to make it a little bit easier for myself. It was getting just a little bit too crazy. So um, I have been coming in and adding about a gallon of water a week and um, it still looks like it could totally use some more. So we will add more at the end here. Just gonna keep going through to see if there's any food or bedding left. And it looks like they've taken, you know, and eaten everything that I've given them. It's a little hard to tell if they've eaten the um, manure, but uh, from the looks of it, uh, yeah, I can't tell. If anybody knows how to tell the difference between worm castings and uh, manure, let me know. So I would say the second thing is that um, worms can eat meat, and that was not in this bin. It was in a uh, mixed species bin. Worms can eat meat. However, <laughs> uh, in the process of eating all that meat, they did attract a crap ton of flies. I will put an insert of pictures. And uh, I would say after two months of not feeding meat to that bin, I am still struggling to get all of the flies out of the basement. And if I was to ever do it again, I'm telling you, I would only do it in a super deep bin and I would bury that meat very, very, very deep. Um, yeah, so I, I have proof of concept, but I'm not gonna say that that is something that I would do um, frequently, uh, you know, at all. <laughs> all right, so number three, um, I think I've gone out of my way to not spend a lot of money on my worm bin, but then I go back and I spend money on the garden in the way of coconut coir, perlite, soil amendments, and it just hit me, if you saw my most recent video about uh, ways to help your garden, um, I will link that video at the end. But basically what I've started doing is I've started adding some of my soil amendments that are organic that are going to take months and months to break down. And I'm adding them to the worm bedding. And that way the worm bins can uh, work over all of that stuff. And then it'll actually be ready by the time my garden needs it, you know, three or four months from now. So... I am spending more money on the worms than I used to. I'm still, you know, recycling all of my shipping boxes by feeding them to the worms, but I have started adding, you know, some more things that I don't normally do in the way of like azomite and things like that. But if you add them to the worm bin, then you don't need to really add as much to the garden later. So I am spending more money, but hopefully saving money later. So number four, um, one of the only bins that was actually uh, impacted by my, my trip, my faded trip, was the, these African nightcrawlers. And I purchased more because I lost, you know, most of my African nightcrawlers. And what I've discovered is that worms can go a very long time without having new food, but what they cannot do without is moisture. And uh, our house sitter, you know, was kind of on the bubble as to whether or not they wanted to, you know, manage any worms. So I was like, no, 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 you don't have to mess with the worms. Um, so that was part of the deal. 
And then when we got stuck over there, there wasn't anybody to come in and actually take care of the African night crawlers uh, when they needed moisture. And so I did have quite the die off. So they can go without food, no problem. Moisture, that's the deal breaker that they cannot do without. So now that we've gone through all of this, I'm gonna, looks like we might have to harvest this the next time. We're getting pretty full. Yeah, there's really nothing left. Okay, so the sixth thing is that slow food, fast food, might actually have more to do with the chemical makeup of the food than it has to do with the frozen, not frozen, fibrous, not fibrous, and things like that. In my bin, I have experienced the slowest food was being cranberries, which you would think are soft and squishy. Nope, uh, 10 months. Ginger, even pre-frozen, nine months. Pineapple, even though it was frozen, it took six months. And then of course, apples, something that everybody feeds their bin, take about four months, even if they're frozen, for the worms to eat them all. Okay, I'm gonna give them some uh, paper bedding. This is my normal prepared bedding that's been sitting here for a couple of months. Um, then I'm going to add some of the manure here. The seventh thing that basically I found out, grit may not be necessary, but it might just slow down how fast the worms are able to consume the food. The bin that I had no grit in seemed to thrive quite well, but I didn't have a twin bin, and uh, so maybe it could have done better. I don't know, but uh, the no grit worked, but, you know, was it the best choice? Not really, because I do add grit to the rest of my worm bins. Okay, so that's about a gallon of the uh, composted cow manure. I'm going to put that over here on this side. And uh, for the eighth thing that I really kind of came to the conclusion is that me having a worm channel has made me a better worm farmer. Everybody who watches is not newbies. I have a lot of people who have maybe even three, four, five times more experience with worms than I do. And uh, I just have this channel to kind of document my process in becoming a worm farmer. And it's really, really helpful that people do comment and give me ideas like, hey, maybe this is your problem, or maybe you could do this, or I've had good luck with this. And honestly, it's made me a much better worm farmer. With, you know, without that feedback, I probably would be not as good as I am today. Okay, next they're gonna get some of my worm chow. I'm probably gonna give them about two cups here. Kind of scruff it in with the, the top of the, the bedding, the paper bedding here. I can uh, put up on the screen what this is made out of. And one of the other things that I've discovered, number nine, is that there's not just one way to be successful in your worm farming. There are no absolutes. Um, there are too many variables for you to say, absolutely, this has to happen. My African night crawlers have to be in a vermi bag or a urban worm bag or something similar because they escape. I live on a busy road, the vibrations drive them a bit nuts. And so without that, my African night crawlers would be all over the floor and would be worm jerky. We know people that are on my channel or have other channels that just have uh, African night crawlers in open bins and they're perfectly fine. They don't try and escape. Uh, you know, I think it's the vibrations that are doing it in my case, but there's no perfect way to do a worm bin. And so I have learned that there are many ways to be successful and there are also many ways to fail. Okay, so let's get them a little bit of water. I'm gonna put that right along the edge where the um, heating pad is. It seems that I'm holding moisture really well every place else in the bin, except for there. But I am gonna give them a little bit all the way around. We're kind of having a warm spell again, so you never know what's gonna happen. Okay, and so then, oops, I'm also going to give them some vegetables. 
they haven't had any in a while and you know variety is the spice of life I wouldn't want them to uh, get bored my uh, potatoes are starting to chit already I might have a, a problem there but there's you know probably five pounds of African night crawlers in here and I look in on this bin and feed them actual food about once a month even though I do come in here and uh, give them worm chow every single week and then the tenth thing that I have learned is that having a full-time job and a channel is very hard but it is totally worth it when my day job is driving me nuts and it does um, I can come home change gears and hang out with you guys and my worms and everything seems a little bit brighter and a little bit better so if you liked the video about my African nightcrawlers I have a playlist for all of the African nightcrawlers right over here and if you've seen that YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here so if you like the video give it a muddy thumbs up if you're not a member of my worm family click that subscribe button and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it ring that bell icon all right guys thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day